welcome to Stella's Meza. On today's episode, we should be cooking a Kenyan meal, which consists of pilau and skumawiki. Now, pilau is a kind of rice dish that's aromatic. It has lots of spices in it, and you can cook it either with chicken or beef or mutton. Today, I'll be using beef. And also for skumawiki, it literally translates in Swahili to push the week. Now, the reason why they call it this is because it's a very affordable um, green and you're looking at it down here if you move down here you can either be it's at, it's like supposed to be kale you can either use kale or you can use collard greens today i'm going to be using collard greens so it's a kind of dish it's called school week because it is supposed to help you get through the week like push the week because a lot of times in kenya people are paid at the end of the month and in between that time you need something that's affordable that can tie you over to the end of the month where you can cook uh, like more expensive meals for your family so this would be the dish it's very nutritious nutritious it's good for you and I'll show you how to make it step by step now for this you will need one whole bunch of collard greens or um, kale now I use, I use a bunch of collard greens and also I'm going to mix that in with some spinach just to add that extra flavor, a small bunch of spinach, okay? And then you will need onions, you will need um, red chili pepper, you will need some salt, you will need a stock cube, those Maggi stock cubes, they're found in the grocery store and I'll show you that. And you will also need turmeric and um, some tomatoes and I'll show you. It'll be, everything will be down on the description box, or if not, you can go to my blog. I'll have everything, including the measurements over there. My blog site is www.stellasmeza.blogspot.com. I'll also include that down in the description box. Now, if you walk over here, I have um, two onions that I cut fine, and I have here some oil. I'm trying to make the pilau here. And I have some oil in there, as you can see. And you want these to kind of brown, okay? Now for pilau, we use whole spices, and that's what I have over here. I have some cinnamon, uh, cinnamon. I have some cardamom. I have some coriander seeds. I have cloves. I have uh, black peppercorns, and I have cumin. Now these are the spices that we use to cook our pilau. And to my pilau dish today, I will add half a cup of uh, frozen green peas and two medium sized potatoes that I cut to this size and then of course we'll need the rice over here I have three cups of basmati rice that I soaked for 30 minutes and then I went ahead and drained out the water now if you want the best result for basmati rice is you soak it for at least 30 minutes wash it first like running through some water let's let the water run clear and then you soak it for 30 minutes that way when you cook it it's going to be nice and fluffy and like separate you don't want your uh, pilau dish mushy okay so this will add to that appealing effect for when you look at the dish and then um i also have beef stock now how i got this is over here i have two pounds of beef that i went ahead and added some salt a teaspoon of salt i added a tablespoon of ginger garlic paste and then about two cups of water and I went ahead and let them boil on medium heat until the meat is this color okay okay it's not cooked all the way but it's it's not red anymore so you boil that for 15 10 to 15 minutes and then you drain the water I use a colander and put it over this and then just collected the beef stock so we're going to use this to cook the rice the pilau dish and that the flavors from the beef and all the spice they put in there the ginger garlic paste is going to come through in the rice so that's why we're going to use that beef stock all right so i've already drained that we're just waiting for uh um, for our onions to get ready we want them to be brown first and then we're going to add in the whole spices that way the whole spices don't burn while the uh, onions are trying to get nice and brown okay so we're going to let that cook over there we're just going to stir it up a little and let it cook and then I'm going to move you over to my workstation here and show you how to cut up collard greens Kenyan style I know in the US you put a ham hock in there and you, you kind of just pinch the leaves and that's delicious though but this is how we do it in Kenya I'm going to show you okay and you are looking to 
I don't speak a lick of French, so I'm going to say this word. If it's not pr cor correctly pronounced, ex excuse me, <laughs> but I'm going to spell it out correctly in, under the description. Is it roulade, roulade, roulade? Only French I speak is wee oui, wee. Oui. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you want something that looks like this, really fine, okay? So I'll show you how to achieve that. And you do the same thing for your spinach. Now in here I've mixed the collard greens and the spinach shredded. I mix them all in there together. Now what I do when I get my bunch of um, greens, I go ahead and put a, a big bowl of water and clean them on both sides, the front and the back. Make sure it's good and clean because sometimes it'll have particles from the sand. And then I lay them together according to size. So the largest leaf at the bottom and then it gradually goes up to the smallest leaf of the bunch. And this is what I do. I take the stalk off from the center. So I hold the stalk and hold the edge here and you just rip and you end up with this. See? So that when you cut it, you don't have the big stalk showing. I, I, I do not like that. You bite into it and you feel that green. Ugh. You don't have that in your skooma wiki. Okay? So again, I'll show you again. See? I hold here and I just and there you have it. So I'm going to show you how I cut this. Okay. So now you have the tip of the leaves facing away from you. Okay. So you're going to kind of rotate it and you're going to make it roll it. I imagine this is how the Cubans do the cigars. Okay. You hold the edge and then you just start. Cut, do it tight. That way it doesn't come apart as you cut. You just roll it away from you. See? Roll it away from you. And then the seam faces the bottom. See? You hold it that way and then now be very careful and you need a sharp knife you cut the center of it halfway through okay and then the bottoms the seam again touching each other you see that so when you cut through that's what's going to give you those nice skinny um slices now i already did this earlier so i'm just going to do a couple slices you want it really thin see that and i'm trying not to be loud i don't want to wake my youngest son up still early see that and you keep going this way until you reach the end now be very careful you see what I'm doing I'm leaving some space between the edge and my hand you don't want to take a knuckle off or a finger off so be very careful all right so you're going to end up with something like this see and a lot of times it's very long and to choke choke somebody who's eating it so what I do after I cut it up like that I turn it around and cut it and a half just one time that way they're long and skinny but not too long to the point that they could choke somebody so now you have the skinny on how to cut the skuma wiki okay so let's go back here and check on our um and you'll see how they're going all right now at this point i can see and i use a red onion for this dish we use a red onion i know why they call it red it looks more purple to me than red but hey Okay, at this point, I'm going to add in my whole spices into the fire. Go get everything, and then let them cook. Now, what's what's happening here is the spices are releasing their aroma into the oil. It's infusing with the oil, and that's going to make for a very nice smelling dish. And then you're just going to let it cook. Okay, now let's check on the onions on this end. Let's see how we're doing. Well, I'm just going to stir them wrong. So I'm going to keep doing this until the onions are nice and brown. Not black, you don't want them to burn down. Nice and brown. And then we're going to add the salt in there. We're going to add the turmeric. And sometimes when you put the turmeric in oil, it's going to start sizzling away. So be careful, step away, because that does stay. It's very good, good for you tastes good but it stains so we're going to do that and then we're going to add the tomatoes into the um, the mix we're going to add the uh, chili powder let me show you see we got turmeric here that's a spice that splatters and it stains so be careful and then we're going to use half a, a, a stalk of nor I, I call them nor or maggie you can use now this just is equivalent to um chicken or beef stock it just gives your food flavor so i'm going to ha add half of that and then i'm going to add some red chili powder some salt and some tomatoes and we're going to take a break so when the everything's nice and good 
I'm going to add um, some tomato paste in here and then we're going to go from there. So I'm going to wait for it to turn brown a little. I don't want you hanging around looking and what's like watching the clock. So come back and I will show you what happens next. Welcome back. Right before the break, we started on our pilau and our skumawiki. I had for our skumawiki some oil and some onions cooking. I want to turn slightly brown. All right, and over here I had for the pilau, I had some oil, I had two onions, I had cinnamon sticks, and other spices I'm going to include in my description box. So we're ready to, for the next sta stage. So we're going to add the potatoes into the, uh, the oil. And you want to cook the potatoes till the edges are brown, but not all the way cooked. Where they're fork tender, but not completely cooked. Add that to the Them cook in there. I'm going to let them fry in the oil a little bit. I'm going to cover them and then we're going to come back when the edges are looking nice and brown and we're going to add in the, um, we're going to add in the tomato paste and the peas and then we're going to add in the beef and the drained rice and then we're going to put the peas in there and then we're going to cover and let it cook for a little bit. All right, so let's check on our skumawiki here. I'm going to turn the heat up a little. Now it's to the point where you don't want them burnt, but you want a nice, um, see that color? It's purple. If there were the white onions, it would be easier to see, but these are purple, so you have to really be careful and see what's happening. So you want a darker purple, brownish thing going on. All right, and then at this point, but if you look, you can see the edges are trying to look a little crisp. See that? A little crisp. So I'm going to add the tomatoes into the mix. Okay. And now you can do three medium-sized tomatoes. What I used was a can of um, diced tomatoes, 7.5 ounce can. I'm going to turn that heat up a little. Gonna add that. Now these are a di peeled and the diced potatoes, the tomatoes. Now I like to use peeled tomatoes because if you used the, uh, I, either, I either use peeled diced tomatoes or I blanch the tomatoes. What blanching means is I put the tomatoes, whole tomatoes, in hot water and then the skin will break open and then I'm gonna uh, take the tomatoes out of the hot water and put them in a bowl with ice water, like very cold water, to stop it from cooking. And then once it's nice and cool, I peel the skin out. Now, I don't like eating the tomatoes and having the skin curled up in the food. I don't think that looks appealing at all. I don't like to bite into that. That's why I like the peeled tomatoes. Okay. So into this, I'm going to add the salt. Now, later on, I'm going to check and make sure that the salt is enough in this dish. Because remember, we're also going to be using chili powder so you don't want it too salty but I'll include the exact amount again in my um, blog site so make sure to visit www.stellasmeza.blogspot.com and I'm just stirring our uh, potatoes in here and it smells really good and then I'm going to cover them back up just want all sides to be evenly cooked that's why I'm checking them alright so I'm going to add the turmeric in here Okay, that's gonna add. You see that it's kind of bubbling around the edges. See that? Then cook down a little before I stir it with the, uh, the tomatoes. Now, to accompany this dish today, I'll also be making kachumbari. Kachumbari is um, Kenya's salsa. Okay, that's what the, the uh, Hispanic community eats and that's what we use for meat dishes, some rice dishes. What it is, is just onions, red onions, and we have um, tomatoes, we have cilantro in there, we have some chili, like a jalapeno or scott bonnet, just cut into little pieces. Now I deceive mine, because I'm a coward, I don't like my food too hot. I like to taste it, I like that suggestion that there's spice in it, but I don't want to be crying and coughing with my food. And then also some lemon juice, so we'll do that later. For now, we're just gonna finish this two off, and then that's kind of long done. We're going to finish this two off and then I'll show you later how to make the kachumbari. So you're going to have here your vegetables. 
You're going to have over here your carbohydrates from the rice. You're going to have your protein from the meat. Balanced diet. Okay? Now, I smush my tomatoes in there a little bit. Now, pilau is something that's eaten in mostly Tanzania and Kenya and Somalia. Uh, there's many ways to cook it. It's, it's originally an Indian dish, I believe, it's, because the spices used in here are Indian, but we made it our own in the way we prepare it. Now, please remember, the other day I got a, a message from a lady saying, that's not how you cook samosas. I ate one in Jukana Club and that's not how you make samosas in Nairobi. Please remember, there's more than one household in Kenya. There's many different people who cook samosas and people are going to add their own variation to things that they make. So please, this is how I cook it. This is how we grew up cooking it in my house. So I'm sharing it with you. If you're looking for something that you don't find it over here in my channel, I'm sure there's hundreds of videos out there. I'm sure somebody somewhere will be making exactly what you are looking for. Or maybe you can show us your way. It's always good to share. Sharing is caring after all. Alright, so I'm going to uh, stock you. I'm just going to crumble it in here. I use half of it. See that? Crumble it in there. By the way, my hands are clean. That's one of my rules in the kitchen. Another rule is no fear. Don't be scared of trying things. Just try it. You never know. Don't let fear hold you back from getting into the kitchen and making something spectacular. Okay. Alright, you did the salt. I'm going to add the chili. See that? I'm kind of mushing them down in the pot. Sweet, 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 sweet. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take my skooma, or kale, or collard greens, and spinach, and I'm just going to start slowly dropping it into the pot. Now, I do not cover my skooma wiki when I'm cooking it. reason why is because it turns color, it becomes brown, which I don't like. I like it to look green, like look like what it really is, it's a green. So I like it to look green. I don't cover it. I just let it cook uncovered. And the point at which you know it's done is when the leaves are soft. You don't. Some people like this crunchy. I don't, and I'll tell you why. Because I do not like that. There's a, a green raw taste. I don't like that. It's it's supposed to be cooked. I don't want to taste that green. So if you tr try it and you taste that greenness in it, you know what I mean. You, you taste it. It's not supposed to taste like that then it's not yet cooked. Let, let it cook a little bit longer. Let me check on these guys a little bit, real quick. It's coming along pretty good. Mm, potatoes kind of look like they're fried. Mm. So the edges look nice and crisp. And then you know it's time to add the next thing. You can just cook. Let's go back here. So, I don't add any water in here, but sometimes just for a little extra flavor, I'll put maybe a quarter cup um, chicken or, or beef stock just to give it flavor. But pretty much the skooma has water in it. It cooks in its own water, just like cabbage does. But be very careful. Once you put it all in, let it cook down for five minutes, right? And then you reduce the heat, that way it doesn't stick to the, per the pan or burn on you. Alright, let me set that aside. And I'm going to slowly turn because it's going to make a mess otherwise. Just kind of fold it in from the bottom, flip it over. That way, whatever everything touches the bottom that has all that goodness. It's the spices and the tomatoes, see what I'm doing? I'm just turning it around. And it might be easier to wait till it cooks down a little, because then it'll be softer and heavier. Like the leaves will be softer, but because of the water getting into the um, 
the skumawiki from the leaves themselves, it'll be easier to flip them over. So I'm going to do that. All right, do not cover it. Leave it alone. Just leave it alone. So we're going to let that cook down for five minutes on a medium, and then I'm going to reduce it. Turn it, turn the leaves around, and then reduce it to uh, medium low. We're going to cook it for 20, 25 minutes uncovered, okay? So I'll let this cook as well, and we'll take a short break. Cleaning crew is here, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Right before the break, we started cooking our uh, skumawiki, and it's cooking away well on medium low heat. If you take a look at that, see that? Uncovered, okay? Now the slight, the darker part of the greens, that's a spinach. But the nice bright and green, that's a collard greens or a kale. I'm not saying there's collard greens and kale in here. I'm saying you can use collard greens or you can use kale. Okay, and you want it to be that color. All right, and over here we have our potatoes, which, which are nice and ready, ready so we're ne ready for the next step. I'm going to add to this um, some tomato paste. And if you see a little bit of sticking at the bottom, don't worry, when you add the beef broth, that's going to come right off. So I'm going to put that in there and stir it around to make sure that all the potatoes get that good stuff in there. And it smells so good. You can see the onions in there. They're not burnt, you see? They're nice and brown. They're not burnt. You don't want them black. Your rice is going to taste burnt. So we have the uh, onions in there. I've added the tomato paste and we have the whole spices. I'm just trying to coat potatoes in all this goodness all right all right now I'm going to add the beef in here okay. now I use some um, beef with bones in it that just adds flavor and I'm going to show you the exact kind of meat the cut of meat I got to use in this dish if you do not want bones in there that's perfectly fine you can just use um regular cut of beef. I'm going to buff that in a little bit. I'm trying to heat up a little. Oh, no drippings? That's flavor, people. Don't leave that behind. No drippings left behind. Turn that up a little bit. And then I'm going to start. Now those potatoes, there's no danger, danger of them breaking. They're not cooked all the way, remember? So you don't have to worry about breaking them in the pot. Let's try them, make sure they get that nice coating of the mixture. Now you're wondering, probably wondering, what about the green peas? I'm going to put that after I put the beef stock, which is what I'm about to do next. And then I'm going to drop in, oh that's heavy, Ooh. yes, yes. Gonna pour that in there. See that beautiful color? That's gonna impart itself into the rice. That's just full of flavor and look at that. Beautiful. Okay. And then next I am going to add the rice. Now I went ahead and drained it. Drained it. Remember it was sitting soaking for 30 minutes. That'll allow or make the rice nice and fluffy. Because the pilau is supposed to be pretty, fluffy, aromatic, and of course delicious. Just trying to leave some water behind. And then we're going to gently stir. Remember when you're cooking rice, you don't want to stir vigorously because you're going to break the grains of rice. You want them, the objective is to have them nice and elongated. And fluffy. All right, we're gonna put this on here. We're gonna let it cook down. So we're gonna test by pressing a grain of rice between your thumb and your pointing finger to see if it is nice and uh, done. If it is done, then you go ahead and transfer your dish, your all the pilau, the rice, and everything. All this transfer it into an oven safe bowl and then let it dry we call it to dry it for like 30 minutes uncovered on 350 degrees actually you know what I'm gonna cover mine I'm gonna cover mine with aluminum foil just to eliminate the danger of the top of the rice burning and then 
for 15 minutes I'm gonna cover it with aluminum foil and then the last 15 minutes I'm gonna uncover it and then just let it now dry from that point on so 350 degrees and then 15 minutes covered in aluminum and then the last 15 minutes uncovered so that it does not burn so we're gonna gently stir in here just kind of turn it over and into itself now if your rice is done and there's still a lot of uh, broth left in there don't let it cook all the way your rice is going to get mushy okay so what you do is you use a mesh colander or a strainer put it over a bowl like this and drain the excess uh, liquid and then that's the point at which you put it in the oven okay so gently ever so gently so not to bring the, break the grains of rice i'm going to do that turn it and then i'm going to cover it kind of press down whatever's sticking out that way it cooks evenly. I'm going to cover it and then I'm going to cook for like 20 minutes until it's nice and soft when you press it between your thumb and your finger and then I'm going to just put this is oven safe. I'm going to throw it in there 350 degrees covered 15 minutes and then the rest the other 15 minutes uncovered and then we'll be back and I'll show you how to make the kachumbari and then we get to eat. So we'll see you back soon. Welcome back. Right before the break, we left where well, we had our pilau on the stove and we're waiting for the uh, beef stock to uh, drop a little and the rice to be cooked. Well, I went ahead and finger tested my rice and it was nice and done. So I drained the excess uh, beef stock through a colander into a waiting bowl at the bottom. And then I went ahead and transferred the rice to an oven safe dish and threw it in the oven. I covered it first for 15 minutes and now I've removed the foil and it's cooking uncovered for another 15 minutes. So when I'm done with this, we'll come back and show you the finished plated item. And also our skumawiki is nice and cooked, it's already done. So now I wanna show you how to make what we call kachumbari. Again, this is like the Kenyan salsa. And what you need is an onion. For the complete description and quantities, I'll go ahead and put it in my blog. So make sure you visit. It's www.stellasmeza.blogspot.com. So I'm just going to mix them, show you what it is, and then mix them as we go. Okay. So over here, I have a red onion that I went ahead and cut fine. You see that? Okay. So to that, I'm going to add um, tomatoes. Now, I know for salsa, sometimes they deseed the tomatoes, they take the seeds out. But in Kenya, we leave them in because that makes it the juice. You want some of that juice in there. Okay. So these are uh, vine tomatoes that I went ahead and cut up. And I'm adding them in there. Okay. And then I also have a jalapeno paper. Now, I don't like my food too hot. So I took out some of the seeds and I cubed them. Okay. And then I have here cilantro. I'm just going to take a little bit and put it in there. Should be plain. We can use that for something else. All right, and then we're just gonna toss them around a little. So you're gonna get the heat from the jalapenos, or you can use Scotch bonnet peppers, and then you're gonna get um, some of that acidity from lemon. Now, a tip: if you want a lot of juice coming out of your lemon, what you do before you cut it open, you roll it on a flat surface. So when it was still whole, I just went ahead and rolled it. That's going to bring all those juices up to the surface, making it easier and to extract the juice and making there to be a lot of juice in there. So I'm just using that. I'm using half a lemon, and you can see juice flying all over the place, but it's okay. <laughs> see that? I took the seeds out. Make sure you take the seeds out. And if it drops in there, no problem, just pick it out. Squeeze it out nice. Okay. And then I'm going to add here a little bit of salt. Okay. So I'm just going to use my fork to kind of incorporate the flavors into each other, kind of smushing down the tomatoes a little. And this goes excellent with skuma, which is what we cooked over there, skuma wiki, which, or, or the kale, um, barbecue. We normally eat with ugali, which is a kind of um, like polenta, like a farmer kind of polenta. And uh, the collard greens there, or kale, and some um, barbecue meat, or uh, um, 
kebabs that goes perfectly together. Now today we're going to eat it with pilau. It also goes good with that. And it smells so good. Oh, that smells so good. Now if you want like a depth of flavor from the pepper, you can go ahead and um, roast the pepper in the oven, 350 degrees for like five to eight minutes. All right, and then just cut it up, de-seed it or leave the seeds in, however you'd like to eat it. And then add it in there. It gives that, um, gives your kachumbari a nice depth of heat. It's really good. See what I'm doing there? Just smushing them up a little. You want the tomatoes to keep the shape, but not to be hard. So that's why I'm pressing it with a fork. And I'm going to keep doing this. Okay. No, it's not too much fun to just watch me do this. So I'm going to keep doing this. We're going to take a break. When we come back, our rice will be ready. Our skooma week is already ready. And we're going to serve it up with some kachumbari. So don't be too long. All right. Welcome back. Right before the break, I had made some kachumbari, which is Kenya's answer to salsa. And right now, I want to show you the finished products. So if you move down here, you see there's a kachumbari. There's a skuma wiki, which is kale and spinach mixed with uh, tomatoes, or you can use collard greens to do the same thing. And there's a, the uh, pilau, the beef pilau, and I just garnish it with some cilantro and some sliced tomatoes, and then we have the meat in there. And now I'm going to serve it up. I'll start with the um, kachumbari. Now, for those of you who love hot stuff, then you love this because it really is hot. Okay, I use a whole um, jalapeno. If you like it slightly uh, hot, just use half of it and then seed it. Take the seeds out. You see that? That's how your skooma is supposed to look. Alright, and then I'm going to take a tomato. I love tomatoes. I'm going to put that there and then I'm going to make sure I have potato in there. See the peas in there? Come closer and take a look. Look at that. It's straight out. The oven's still hot. The house smells incredible. I got a piece of beef there. Looking for potato. There, I got one. Mm -hmm. I wish you guys were here to smell this. Better yet, eat it. Okay. Try not to destroy it. So after we're done with this shoot, my crew and I, my family, are going to enjoy this meal. All right, so let's see what we're working with here. The beef is tender. It's fork tender. Let's see. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. The flavors, they hit you in, in layers. Let's see about the. Look at that. Nice and soft. Let's try that. Mmm. That is really good. It's, still, it's tender. See, we, we started by not cooking all the way, but because it was sitting inside of the rice while it cooked, and then when you went to the oven, it's nice and tender. So let's try this kumawiki. I love this. Very nutritious. Oh my God. That's very, very, very tasty. And now, don't laugh, because I'm... <laughs> not very good with hot food, okay? I like it, but it just burns. husband's gonna love that one. Oh, but this is delicious it smells great everything turned out perfect see that the rice is nice and flaky it's not all mushed up see and when you get out the oven just um, gently very gently scrape off the top when it's uncovered it'll, the top um, layer of rice is gonna get a little bit hard and when we were younger we used to fight for that everybody would be waiting like okay I got the, the call it out I got the top Okay, so put that on the side and you can snack on it and then you can enjoy this meal anytime but we can cook it for special occasions. I like to cook it for some Sunday dinners. And I hope you get to try this recipe and enjoy it like my family and I will. And actually I want to say something. I'm going to be doing a video soon on questions and answers for my subscribers and anybody who has questions for me. Write to me, send me an email and I'll 
do a video and respond to your questions as best as I can. So I enjoy having you guys. Thank you to all my subscribers for keeping this fire going. I'm very like pleasantly surprised. I didn't expect to get this big. So I love you all from the bottom of my heart. Mwah. And I hope you join me next time as I take your taste buds on another culinary safari, Karibu. Yeah, 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 yeah.